as we've been saying, as you're sitting in your comfy sofas. And I was just thinking about the scripture in Galatians 6 verse 2, which is about carrying each other's burdens. Uh, to fulfill the law of Christ and um, you know tonight we're going to carry each other's burdens in prayer we're going to share the load we're going to encourage one another um, so that's a great evening ahead for us tonight yeah and welcome if you're joining us from the website or if you're just scrolling by and you happen to come across us welcome <laughs> yeah if you um if you start a watch party you immediately increase the spread and the amount of people and the reach of um of what we're doing and and so we've seen the numbers really um up to you know between 1500 and 2000 which is great it means we're getting the message out there so if i can encourage you again to start a watch party and share the broadcast and we get the message out there fantastic we're so excited we're going to be having uh, pastor robert mars Spark from Life Church in Folkestone will be joining us in about um, about 15 20 minutes or so, which is going to be brilliant. Hi, Will William, Bill, Oliver, and Margaret. Hi, Bill. Oh, Hi, Dave you. Hartnup. Good to see you. And D is here, I believe, because Dave is saying hi to D. <laughs> hi, Derek. It's great to have you here. Yeah, welcome. If you're joining us from overseas, uh, from another country, you know, we're all part of God's family, and um, you know, we welcome you and uh, to join our family this evening as we come together. So welcome if you're uh, watching us from another country and I know we've had a few people joining us um, uh, from other places and uh, we welcome you tonight as well. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I was thinking, you know, ah, here we are, Masood Akbari. Hi, Masood. Lovely to have you with us. Uh, God bless you. What are you looking forward to most when we get together as church mm. again, physically, I wonder? Um, you know, we, I, I was having, I was watering the garden a little while ago and, and thinking, you know, what do we miss about church? And and then, of course, God has been speaking to us about what is church mm. and Church is not the building. Church is the body and the people of Christ being together, being united, uh, being one. It's we are. In fact, I was thinking we are the bride of Christ. Yeah. We are so precious to Jesus himself that we're called his bride. Mm. And um, he is. It says the Bible says he's interceding for us always. And so, uh, oh, that's the doggy jumped up there behind us. <laughs> yeah, that's Toddy, our little dog. Yeah, so Jesus is, is praying, is interceding before the Father on your behalf, on my behalf, on our behalf. And um, it says that he's coming back for his bride. He's coming yeah. back for his bride and, and we will be united together with him at the wedding supper of the Lamb. Just think of that. Um, you know, those of you who've been married, um, those of you who've, who, whose children have been married, you remember that day. I, I remember when our daughter was Josie was married, and the the preparations and the beautiful dress and the the it was such a special occasion. You know, the the, the biggest occasion in her life, and it's just a picture, if you like, of the the consummation and the joining together that is to come for us, the bride of Christ. Amen. Amen. Looking forward to that. Yeah. Let's pray anyway. Yeah. Angela says, I'm missing Vinny's diner. Yes, absolutely. We are missing Vinny's diner. And uh, Dee says, dancing with all my brothers and sisters. It's true. I was thinking about that, Dee. You know, there's something wonderful, isn't there, about just being together, worshipping mm -hmm. together, dancing together. And I think uh, when we do come back together, you know, we'll realise we're not going to take that for granted again and really going to enjoy that being together again. Mm. Great. Well, um, hi, Teresa. Good evening. Hi, Angela. Good to have you with us. Um, talking about Vinnie's Diner and yesterday I popped into the church and the Vinnie's Diner's team were, some of them were there. They were being organised and led by Justin. Well done, Justin. Uh, running the food bank and he was telling me just earlier today that uh, yesterday they gave out 45 food packages to those who need food. Mm -hmm. Isn't that great news? So um, we had a brilliant team of people. Well done Justin, well done for all those who were helping. I can think of Julia, Lorraine, uh, I saw Rachel Newland was there yeah. helping with the deliveries. Thank you so much to all the volunteers. 
And also, we've had people um, contacting the church and asking how they can help, how they can donate food. We had a catering company called um, Chives Caterers, run by Graham and Debbie Green, uh, who have donated this week 63 cooked and packed meals to give away so that's cooked and ready meals wow. and I want to say thank you yeah, to thank you. Um, Graham and Debbie Green God bless you thank you to Ash at Cinnamon Spice yeah. who's been cooking you know the beautiful Indian meals and mm. donating them we've had 30 meals a week giving out to those in in great need so let's just pray into yeah. that and thank God for these um, amazing things yes, thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father we thank you for calling us together, mm. calling us together across the, the net like mm. this to, to be with you, to encourage one another. And um, thank you that you've brought us together as well to be a light in the darkness, even by providing physical yeah. help like the food. We thank you for the food bank. We thank you for the volunteers. We thank you, Lord, for Graham and Debbie yeah. of Chives Caterers and for Ash of Cinnamon Spice and for all those other businesses that have donated. We ask mm. you, you would bless them mm. in Jesus name. Yes. Thank you, Father. And bless all the volunteers. Yes. And we welcome everyone that's continued to join us tonight. Hi, Simba and Sarah and Dot and Les. Great to have you with us. Hi, Paula. Hi, Bianca. <laughs> Hi, Bianca and Derek. Lovely to have you with us as well. Well, we talked about um, the the church is the bride of Christ. We want to uh, have a time of worship now by, uh, I'm going to play to you a beautiful video of churches that have come together at this time. It's actually in the States and have sung this, the blessing, mm -hmm. the ironic blessing over their city. And as you, as you enter and as you listen to this, we've sung it here, the pair of us, yeah. um, and receive the blessing mm -hmm. for yourself. It's for the people of God. Yeah. And also, Pray that blessing over your family, yeah. over your community, mm. in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Here's Enjoy. that. Here's this beautiful video. Enjoy. Yeah.
had a thousand generations And your family and your children And their children and their children May his favor be upon you And a thousand generations And your family and your children And the children and the children May his favor be upon you And a thousand generations And your family and your children And their children and their children May his favor be upon you And a thousand generations And your family and your children And their children and their children May his presence go before you And behind you and beside you All around you He is with you He is with you He is with you In the morning In the evening In your coming And your going In your weeping And rejoicing He is for you He is for you He is for you He is for you Thank you, Lord. Wasn't that awesome? That was so anointed. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that you have gone before us, that you are for each and every one of us. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you that your church is uniting together at this time, is coming together. What a wonderful time of hearts uniting together, singing over our nation, singing over this world. The enemy couldn't keep us shut, couldn't keep our mouths closed because you are worthy to be glorified, Lord Jesus. All glory and honour to you, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, that you've gone before us. And I just know that the Lord would say his favour is upon you tonight. His favour is in your household. He is for you. He is for you. And wasn't that amazing? You know, when you see all those churches, different churches come together in one accord, that would never have happened if it had not been for the situation that we're in right now in lockdown, where we're all online and different worship teams coming to just give thanks and give praise. You know, there's such a, a power, isn't there, when we come and join together. And, and that is a declaration that is going out all over the earth for such a time as this. Yeah, I mean, that, those were from pastors and, and members of churches in Pittsburgh uh, and were blessing their city. So, yeah, what, what an incredible power to uh, to 
uh, impact their city like that, you know, in the heavenly realms. Im imagine what's going on mm. as they're blessing their city in unity together, speaking that blessing over the city. And, and Lord, we thank you yeah. for reminding us of the power mm. that we have, that yeah. you, the authority you've given us to bless our community. And in the name of Jesus, mm. we join together. And as a church, we bless yeah. our town. We bless our community. Yeah. We bless Bless our churches, the churches of Ashford and, and, and the surrounding areas, the churches, our friends. Lord, we bless them yeah. in Jesus name. Pour out your anointing on them at this time. Lord, let them know your favor. Yeah. Let them know your face toward them. Let them yeah. know your shalom yeah. peace in Jesus yes. name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 And, um, you know, we're so excited in a moment. We're going to be joined by one of the um, one of the pastors from one of the local churches uh, in Folkestone. So it's just up the road there and uh, a very good, good friend of ours. Um, yeah. So if you do have any prayer requests uh, for this evening, you know, it's a time when we can be praying yeah. with you, yeah. praying together. So as the Holy Spirit gives you, we will have a time of praying uh, towards the end as well. We'll be praying through through this. Mm. And so uh, if you have any requests, do just write them in the comments and we can pray. And uh, I've already had a message through from Jimmy. Uh, who said, please pray for John Knightley. I know John and his wife were going out to s visit their father-in-law. So that's Dong Mei's uh, dad. And, and Heavenly Father, yes, yeah. we lift up uh, John and Dong Mei mm. and the family. We lift up Dong Mei's father yes, and we ask that you would be with him. We ask that you would heal him. Mm. We ask that you would be with John and Dong Mei at this time and Enoch. Yeah. And Lord, go before them and bless them and help them. We ask in Jesus name. Mm. Amen. Everybody said amen. And now Paul has uh, sent one through there. Oh, yeah. Uh, to pray for Fiela and Scott. Yeah. Oh, here we go. We will pray right, for we're, that. We're going to be praying. Thank you for that. Let's just. Uh... <laughs> Let's get, get, get you on the broadcast here. Okay. Hi, good evening. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Wonderful to have you, Pastor Robert. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's Thank a you. joy to be with you. Great. Uh, yeah, please uh, say hello to all the viewers uh, watching from uh, Bright City Church and around. Uh, we... yeah. Well, everybody, I consider it a privilege to share this time with you. And, you know, uh, uh, the week before last, I was doing something like this with the church in the Netherlands. And... It's amazing how we could communicate. Uh, some months ago, I was talking to a church in California, and I'm thinking, wow, what a new world we live in, how we could communicate this way. Yeah. And amazing. especially at a time like this, while we can't gather together, I consider it a privilege to be with you this evening. Thanks so much. Yes. And so we know each other from uh, a good few years ago. Uh, I met Pastor Robert. Well, we both did. It was through our children going yeah. to your school that um, at Life Church called Oakwood School, as you remember, of course. And um, <laughs> I remember when, uh, in fact, our youngest daughters, our respective da daughters, Ellen and Mariah, both became very good friends. <laughs> and, and you would come round and, and, and uh, bring Mariah around and we'd bring. Uh, Ellen to yours the sleepovers <laughs> yeah yeah and, and I remember it was just before in fact we were preparing to go to Indonesia and and you were in fact shared how your father had a, a an amazing ministry in Indonesia um, oh in, in the 50s and 60s I would say so it's a long time ago my father could not walk the streets of Jakarta or Surabaya, which are some of the biggest cities in Indonesia, without the crowds running up to him. He had crusades all over Indonesia, mm. with many times 100,000 people come. I uh, one time went with him, and we went to a island that is not easy to get to, and there's only 10,000 people that live on that island, wow. and 9,000 people came to the crusade. Wow. And wow. so many precious people got to know the love of God through Jesus Christ, yeah. and I had the privilege to be there with him. My father started an orphanage home in Java, in right. uh, yeah. 
uh, on the island of Java yeah. and for many, many, many years, they kept reaching out to the people that needed Jesus. So yeah, I, I have quite yeah. a history there through my father with Indonesia. Amazing. Yeah. And then uh, when we came back, um, you helped us so much, Pastor yeah. Robert, and, uh, you know, you, you helped to find us a place to live yes. when we were in uh, some difficulties. And, um, you know, we, we then uh, were part of your church for, it was seven years. Well, I should say something about this because, <laughs> yes, the Lord gave us this wonderful relationship through yeah. the Holy Spirit. Mm. And it shows you the power of having a connection, a joining yeah. that's spiritual. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, where the Holy Spirit joins people together. Because when you came back... Virginia and I, we sat together, we said, we got to do something. They've given up everything to go. Now they're coming back, they have nothing. And within less than three weeks, we had the house, yep. we had all the furniture, yep. everything was ready for you. And we know that that was the Lord who gave that to you because we just happened to be the instruments that he used. And it was a great privilege to be that instrument. But it was the Lord because it just all happened. It was God working it. It was yes. quite powerful. That's right. And, I, and, you know, I often share that testimony to people mm -hmm. because, you know, when God gave us a promise when we left uh, England, he said he would um, look after our going out and our coming back. And we didn't realise we'd come back quite so soon, but he kept his promise. He looked after us. He really provided. And of course, you were the instrument that he used, but it's an amazing testimony. You know, we came back with five suitcases, but God gave us everything above and beyond what we you know we could ever have you know imagined we didn't well and he gave thing. you things that you all desired that your children desired yeah. and that we knew nothing about that were donated by different people you know it does show you uh, like you said when you go in and out how mm -hmm. god will bless you because many times people they will go through the time of going out but when they come in that can be challenging yeah. it's mm -hmm. like uh, you know, I would go preach all over the place and I'd come home and we would have all kinds of pressure at home in our marriage. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, I, you know, if you don't know the truth, you can believe silly things. Mm -hmm. You know, I would believe, OK, I'm, I'm going for Jesus. So the devil's beating me up. So I'm having to suffer for the Lord, which is silly. Mm -hmm. And I pray to the Lord. I said, Lord, why do I see your blessing when I go out? But I see only trouble when I come home. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me by simply reading the Bible. If you read the Bible, the Holy Spirit will make, you make it so easy on the Spirit to speak to you. Yeah. I read the Bible and Isaiah, it says, And you shall mount up with wings mm -hmm. like eagles, and run and not be weary, and walk and not faint. And when I read that scripture, God spoke to me and he said, Robert, when you go out, you spread your wings. When you come home, you put your wings up. And I understood exactly what the Lord meant. Yeah. I shouldn't go out of the house expecting his spirit and power to enable me. I should come home, expect his spirit and power to enable me. And ever since I've cha changed the way I live. Amen. Wow. We have the blessing of the Lord at home. Yeah, and when amen. you guys came home, you came home with the spirit of the love of Jesus. And I could see God's blessing on you. Yeah, it was exciting. Bless you. Yeah. And look well, what he's well, done for you now. Now Let's be encouraged. Of, of yeah. The right city church. Amen. Wow. Right. Amen. Yeah. God's <laughs> been so good. And um, you planted the church in Folkestone with Virginia. Um, was it about 35 years ago or so? And so? Last October. So 2019 October was 30 years ago. Oh, 30 we years. started in our living room right in, nearby where I live now on Bottenham Road, number nine Bottenham Road. And the Lord gave us that house in a really Oh, what a phenomenal story, talking about God taking care of you. He gave us that house, and we paid only £75 a month rent to live there. Wow. And God did a miracle for us. And we started in the living room, and uh, then the neighbors got all nervous because we had about 27 people coming every week. And they called out to council, and then Mr. De La Mer, I'll never forget him. He, we became good friends. He came, and he was a bit stirred up by the neighbors. And he had heard chanting coming from our house because we yeah. used to pray so loud in those days. Yeah. <laughs> so I said to Mr. Lemire, well, Mr. Lemire, come on in. And I thought, what am I going to do, Lord? I said to him, I think it's best I demonstrate to you what the chanting is. 
And the moment I started praying, the Holy Spirit came all over him and he started weeping and we prayed for his son and we became good friends. So it shows you how God can turn things. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's yeah. amazing. And um, you have an international ministry now uh, with your wife. You go all over the world. I know. I know, Pastor Robert, you are a pastor of pastors. Yeah. You're a mentor <laughs> to many pastors. You're a mentor and very dear friend to, to myself you're a friend of our family yeah. you married our daughter as in you wow. you you you, you uh, conducted the, the marriage and um, and she married one of your uh, if you like spiritual sons wesley and so yeah. we we are indeed so joined and uh, it's wonderful to be joined to you yeah mm. yeah yeah i consider it a privilege and you know it, it, i give you a little little testimony I have a dear friend, Pastor Dave Whaley, who lives all the way in Boise, Idaho, in the United States. Boise. It's a long way from wow. here. I'd be up in prayer in the morning, mm. and all of a sudden, this thought comes to my heart, and I send him a little text message, and God speaks to him. You know, we should so appreciate mm. when God joins people together. Yeah. I believe God has joined our hearts together. Every time I get together with you, Pastor, <laughs> the Holy Spirit comes in the most wonderful way to show that you're not just another pastor who just is looking for a job and a pulpit to preach, but that you are a strong man of God, mm -hmm. that God is remembered the investment of all the people that Thank have been you. before you yeah. in what Amen. was called Ashford Christian Fellowship in 1987, I think it was. I came the first time to visit oh, yeah. and, I, and, and God has remembered the seeds that have been yeah. sown. Amen. And this is a time of harvest for Bright City Church. Yeah. And Amen. that's why he's also raised you and Rachel up and all the people around you to do a great work in the day we're living. I really am fully convinced of this. Amen. 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 <laughs> Thank you so much. That's so encouraging. And um, I know that uh, you, you obviously you've got a, this wonderful ministry. Now, you've got an amazing story of how you came to the Lord. Um, mm. uh, could you briefly just go over how you came well, into ministry? Well, you know, my father... It was a, he's in heaven uh, since 1997, but he was a great apostle of God. He was a great pioneer. Uh, oh, you know, healing was normal in our home. Mm -hmm. When we would be ill, my mom or dad would pray and we'd get healed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I broke, uh, you know, I broke my neck. I'll tell that story in a moment. And my father prayed for me and Jesus healed me. Amen. I grew up in this. Yeah. I grew up in yeah. this power. Mm -hmm. My father had churches all over the Netherlands, evangelized all over the world and so forth. And for anybody who would like to see, you can Google Holland Wonder Crusade and you'll see T.O. Osborne in 1958, I think it is, mm. standing on the field in the city of Den Haag, Holland, where I come from. And my father is standing next to him. And over 100,000 people gave their hearts to Jesus. The ambulances would wow. bring people from the hospitals. The moment they got on the field, Jesus healed them. Wow. Hallelujah. And so I come out of this history. But you know mm -hmm. something? Just because you're born in a Christian home doesn't make you a Christian. Mm -hmm. Christ needs to be born in your own heart. Mm -hmm. And I turn my back on the Lord. You know, yes, I go to church because that was the way we lived. But I lived in the world. And my mother... She put her hand to my shoulder one day when I was 17 and she said, Robert, you're a good boy, but you've got to give your life fully to Christ. And I said, yeah, mom, I know, but don't worry. Jesus can't come yet. Too many prophecies aren't fulfilled. I've got plenty of time. She said, Robert, how could you say such a thing? Your life is not in your own hands. And those words when they miss, she didn't say it in anger mm -hmm. or frustration. And I remember I was going to visit my sister Esther in upstate New York in the United States. And I had lived with them uh, all in the early 70s in the United States. And uh, I went to go stay with them. And while I was in the airplane, I looked out of the window high up in the sky and I saw the clouds below. And I thought, well, Lord, if you come, I could quickly pray. Jesus, forgive me. And I'll be okay. You know, and that's, that is wonderful when you know if you call upon your, his name, you'll be saved. But you got to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't do it. 
Yeah. So to make the story short, on a Friday night, we went to a movie theater and we were a bit late. So I was going over 100 miles an hour down the back road. Wow. And and before I knew what happened, I can't, I, I can't remember what happened because it happened so quick. I had collided head on with another car. And the whole car that I was in was torn. And I had broken my second vertebrae in two places. Christopher Reeves, the old Superman, mm -hmm. broke his second vertebrae in one place and was paralyzed completely. So I was in a coma when this happened, which actually was partly saving my life that there was no movement. And then I was in the hospital in a coma and Jesus came to me. And he said to me, Robert, uh, Robert, you know my name very clearly, what have you done for me mm -hmm. in your life? And because I'd been living in sin, I couldn't answer him. My sister Esther, my older sister, who's a wonderful woman of God, she got a scripture for me while I was in that coma. In other words, while she was praying, the Holy Spirit kept giving her this scripture. She looked it up, Proverbs 29, verse 1, and it says, After many times of reproof, your neck will be unmendedly broken. So according to God's law, I was written off, but Jesus saved me. And that's the gospel we have. According to God's law, we're all sinners. Mm -hmm. But according to the grace that comes from God through Jesus Christ, we can all be saved if we receive Jesus. To as many as receive him, he gives the power to become children of God. Amen. Well, when I woke up from that coma, which was four days after the accident, my father came into the room. He had flown in from the Netherlands where I come from. And he walked in the room and he said to me, Robert, don't you think it's the grace of God that you're not dead? <laughs> wow. And tears came down my cheeks because I realized the grace of God. You know, dear friends, for all of you that are watching, I feel that grace so mm -hmm. strong while I'm talking to you. Mm -hmm. The grace of God is here for you. Yeah. Just like it was for me there in that hospital room. It had mm -hmm. been there all the time. I just hadn't acknowledged it. And when my father said these words, my heart opened up. He said, let's pray and go home. And he prayed this little prayer for me. Thank you, Jesus, that you're always with us and that by your stripes, Robert is healed. And I was healed instantly and walked out of the hospital three days later. Oh, wow. And my father said something to me that at that moment I didn't fully understand. When we walked out of the hospital, he said, Robert, now you know your life is not your own. And I tell you the truth, I know that the life I now live is a gift of mm -hmm. God that's come to me freely through Jesus Christ and it keeps coming to me. I live in this life, this life of the Son of God I have in this body and that's what it means to be a Christian. Amen. It's exciting. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. You know, that must be so encouraging to, um, you know, the people watching maybe who've got sons, daughters, who, you know, are not walking with the Lord. I know that. Well, be a... can I say something about this, Pastor? Please. You see, the accident happened on Friday night, the 19th of September, 1978. On the Tuesday before that, suddenly my mother, who had been praying and praying for me for years and years while I'd been so rebellious. I mean, I'd smoked three packs a day. I, I was I was so rebellious in so many ways and I wouldn't listen, you know, no matter what they said, I didn't listen. But they kept loving me despite all of this. They yeah. kept having faith for me despite Amen. all of this. That's yeah. the power of Jesus yeah. for parents too. Amen. Jesus will give you power to stay in faith with your children. Yes. Jesus will give you power to keep loving them when they're not lovable. Yes. Yes. But anyway, Hallelujah. on the Tuesday before the accident, suddenly my mother felt in her spirit, I need to fast for Robert. Mm. So she started fasting for me Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then at the end of the day on Thursday, she got this joy. She was laughing and laughing and laughing. Yeah. And she's yeah. thinking, Lord, what's happened? Yeah. You've done something for Robert. I don't know what it is, but you've done it. On Friday, my sister Esther called her and she said, Mama, Robert has had a car accident and he's in a coma. And the doctors don't know if he's going to make it. But Jesus had already showed Mama mm. the battle was won. Amen. The victory I've given it. 
Wow. Isn't that absolutely wonderful it's when Jesus is on your side? <laughs> absolutely. Parents? So wonderful. So wonderful. Pastor Robert, would you pray for those watching? I know some who, yeah. who's, who's, ch who's grown up children are not walking with the Lord and they're praying for them. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Jesus, I am so grateful that mm. you saw my father and my mother's love and faith for me. It was your love in their hearts for me. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you give your love in the heart of all the parents right now that are watching yes. and listening. Yes. Yes, Lord. That they have your love. Mm. Yes, that Lord. they were are able to love their children with your love. Mm -hmm. Your love that is more powerful than sin and death mm -hmm. itself. Oh, it says in the scriptures in Romans chapter 5 that God demonstrated his own love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. for putting this love into the parent's heart. And that from this moment, their prayers, yes, their Lord. faith breaks through the darkness. Yes, yeah. Lord. And miracles begin yes, to happen yes, in yes, their children's that. lives. Amen. And God yes, says Lord. to you, fear not. My covenant is with you. The same spirit Thank and you. faith I've given you, I've given to your children yeah. and you, your children's children. Hallelujah. So, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Awesome. Thank you, Pastor Robert. Wonderful. So um, then, mate, how did uh, you come to plant a church then in Folkestone in the UK from uh, from Holland? Well, I was a pastor in the Netherlands for five years. Yeah. And God, and I was working with my father who, and my brothers run his ministry there. It's a very large ministry and have many churches and many wonderful works. And I was like a right hand man with my father. Yeah. But I had a prayer life every day and mm -hmm. God spoke to me one day, just like out of the blue, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Suddenly his voice came to my spirit, this knowing, this consciousness that God said to me, I've called you out by my word. Mm -hmm. With my spirit, I understood exactly what God meant. But with my natural mind, I just didn't want to accept it. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. what do you want, Lord? Uh, just tell me what to do. He had just told me. Yeah. And I started fasting and praying. Lord, just tell me what to do. Isn't it amazing that we often have the light, but aren't willing yet to completely yield to it. We yeah. have the direction of God, but aren't responding. And I, I didn't respond. So I was fasting and praying for three months. <laughs> and after three mm. months, I was completely broken. I, I was so broken. I didn't know what to do anymore. Mm -hmm. I, you know, when we are not obeying the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. we get messed up. Mm -hmm. yeah. We get into a muddle. Oh, I was so messed up. I had been, listen, I had been praying for four hours that morning. Yeah. And my wife walked into the living room and she saw me sitting on the sofa. And she said to me, it's not working, is it? I said, no, he won't talk to me. She says, darling, you have to surrender. I said, yes, I'm trying to surrender. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> she said, that's all you need to do, sweetie. Surrender. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, I'm going to go pray again. And listen, I went downstairs to my place of prayer. And I kneeled down and I said, Jesus, I give you my father, my mother, my brothers, mm -hmm. my sisters, my dreams, my visions, my mm -hmm. prophecies, this nation, the people, the church. I give you everything. Please, Lord, speak to me. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit came all over me and he spoke to me the same word again. I've called you out by my word and he set me free. And the reason I tell this story, because the process of obedience is a work of his grace in our lives. And that was so important that that process was so agonizing because I can look back through all I went through. That was very painful. Yeah. But I never had any doubt. I never had any doubt because God worked that obedience in me by his spirit. Amen. It wasn't just a mental ascent. It was an inward work of God's yeah. grace that enabled me to obey. And I knew in my spirit, by the Holy Spirit, I was to go to Britain. Mm. So we came to Britain in 1986. And we, and that's a long story. I'd love to tell all these stories. Amazing mm -hmm. miracles God mm -hmm. did. But yeah. we came to live in the town, the city of Bath. 
and I would go all over the country and preach here and there in Cornwall and different places in, in uh, uh, oh, yeah. oh, uh, Cambridge or, mm -hmm. and so forth. And, and during that time, God was working in my heart. You know, it's one thing to obey mm -hmm. and God to bring you out from where you are. It's another thing for him to get out of you where you were. Yeah. And that took a little time for right. God to work in me. Yeah. And I'm so grateful that he took his time to work mm -hmm. it in me. And then all of a sudden, he spoke to me that I was to come to Kent. And mm -hmm. that I was to hold Jesus Now Crusades. And that we were going to start a church in Kent. So we, Virginia and I, traveled all over Kent. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't find a place. And God spoke to me to have the first crusade in Dover. Yeah. In the town hall of Dover. And oh, that's such a marvelous story of the miracles God did there. Wow. Then we had a crusade at the Leastcliff Hall, then mm. at the Marlow Theatre in yeah. Canterbury, then in Maidstone, and then I went to, yeah. to Hereford and in other places all over the country. And in that time, I was praying. And, you know, I was living in outside of Canterbury in a place of Chesfield. And I said, Lord, I feel I'm standing on top of where I'm to start the church, but I just spiritually can't see it. Mm -hmm. And when I said this, I said, Lord, why can't I see it? And in my spirit, I saw Daniel praying. Mm -hmm. When Daniel was wanting to see the will of God, there was forces of darkness that were hindering him from seeing it. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, Satan, how dare you stand against God's purpose for my life? You have no part in me at all. Mm -hmm. And instantly my eyes opened and I saw it was Folkestone. Oh, hallelujah. And I said to the Lord, oh, wow, Lord. Yeah. Have I made too many mistakes? Are you setting me aside in this little bitty town? <laughs> or do you have something big in mind? Mm. Whatever is the answer, I will obey. Yeah. Five minutes later, literally, a dear lady who's in heaven now called Naomi Skelton called me. She said, Robert Masbach? I said, yes. She said, Jesus told me to call you right now and to tell you you're starting a church in Folkestone and it will become a very large work. Wow. <laughs> And that That's night, amazing. I had a dream. Yeah. And in this dream, I saw a church of 100,000 people. Wow. wow. And I said to the Lord Jesus, is that all, Lord? Is there anything else? He said, it's a good beginning. Now we're 30 <laughs> years down the road, and I believe the beginning is here. I know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. That's wonderful. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, now your influence, and um, particularly with pastors around the world, mm. and... What I was wanted to ask you now, you know, particularly at this time and as you've recently traveled around the churches in, in different parts of the world, what uh, do you feel God is doing? God is saying maybe even in this time um, where we're all in lockdown, as it were. Any, yeah. any thoughts or impressions? Well, a lockdown like this is very costly. Mm. And, uh, and, and, and we all realize that it is, it is costing more than we can imagine. You know, it overwhelms Virginia and I when we hear how many people have passed away mm -hmm. daily. Yeah. Yeah. It overwhelms us. Mm -hmm. Precious people that could be my mom, my brother, my sister, mm -hmm. my family members, you know. And because that's what it is for many people. It's their mom, their dad, their brother, their sister. Yeah, yeah. And I think... It's important that we realize how costly mm. this lockdown is, yeah. not just to the economy, mm. but it's costly. Yeah. And whenever you have something costly, we should consider it valuable, mm -hmm. precious. Yeah. So what would be the divine purpose in it all? Yes. Yeah. What, what would God like to achieve? Mm -hmm. You know, in 1978, after I had broken my neck, they had put a what they call a halo on me. Yeah. And that's where they drill holes in your head and they put this contraption on you. Mm -hmm. And I had to sit in a room for 10 weeks. I was in a lockdown. And even though Christ had come in my life and he'd done a miracle and put the bones back together in my neck, etc., etc., I was still having to be in that lockdown. And mm -hmm. I was not what I am today. I was still very earthly in my thinking. And so sitting there, sitting there, I got fed up. 
at just a 17 year old, almost 18 year old boy. And one day I thought, okay, I've had it, forget it. I'm not just gonna sit here anymore. And there was on the table, the phone, and there was on the table, the little Bible my sister gave me. And I was having one thought, call your friends, they'll come and pick you up, you're out of here. You're partying, mm -hmm. you know, you're going out there. That's where I used to live, in that partying and drinking and everything else. And that was one thought. The other thought was the thought my father had put in my heart when he has visited me. He said to me, Robert, read the Psalms. Mm -hmm. And here I'm walking to the table and some divine providence of God's mercy helped me to take the Bible instead of the phone. Oh, Hallelujah. dear friends, I so believe that God's providence is here. You're asking me, Pastor, what do I feel God is wanting to say to us right now? His providence, His care, not just His provision, but His guidance, His leadership for us. I picked up that little Bible, I opened it, and it came open to Psalm 109, verse 26 and 27 where David is crying out to God and he says, help me, mm -hmm. O Lord. Mm -hmm. And then it says, do it, help me, help me so that everybody can see you've done it. Yeah. And God spoke to me and he said, Robert, I'm gonna show everybody, I am the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. I am your shield, I am the lifter of your head, I am your glory. The Lord spoke to me so clearly, wow. and I think that this is what the Holy Spirit wants us to receive out of this lockdown. Yes. Yes, we need to pray for our fellow man. We need to pray for the care of our NHS workers and everybody else. We need to pray for the precious people who are suffering with illness, that the Lord spare their life and that they will not die but live. We need to do it. But what is the Lord trying to show you and me? Yes. His divine providence. Mm -hmm. Listen, Job, what a phenomenal example of a lockdown. Mm -hmm. You know, he was sitting there, he was sick from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. He was so ill that he was deformed that his family members didn't recognize him and didn't want to because it was so horrid, his mm -hmm. illness. His 10 children had all died in one day. His business was gone in one day. Everything was gone. And he learned during that time that his that God's providence, his care, his guidance, his help, his provision will not fail us. Yes. I think the whole world needs this. Yes. Amen. You know, as a world, we've kind of gotten away mm. from knowing who the true living God is. Yes. Yes. We've become morally mm. disorientated. Yeah. We've, we've become, become spiritually disorientated. disorientated. We all are living for the day-to-day -day pleasures and everybody is to decide what's right for themselves instead of being guided by God's Spirit and being led in what God had planned for each and every one of our lives. And this is, I believe, the Lord is so showing all of you. And the Lord says to you, look to me and be saved. Call upon yes. me. While I am near, yes. Yes. Right. while I may be found, Thank let the wicked man forsake his way and the unrighteous man yeah. his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord yeah. and the Lord will abundantly pardon, which this scripture you can find in Isaiah in chapter 55 or 67. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, I, um, as you were sharing there, just today I was meditating on this, be still and know mm -hmm. that I am God. I will yeah. be exalted mm -hmm. over the nations and over all the earth. And uh, yeah. there's that sense of, of God is making us be still. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and there is a turning towards him. And even as you were sharing there, I, I, I've noticed even in our own circles where, you know, our people, our youth and, and young people are turning towards the word of God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're, they're reading it together, even online. There's a there's a turning towards him. So, yeah, I just uh, can re absolutely concur with 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 that as well, Pastor Robert. Mm. Yeah. And may, may I, I share, share one, one little scripture before, before we come, come to the end? end. Please. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, oh, I, I love, love the scripture. scripture. You know, you know I, I want to encourage for all, all of you, you know, know when, when you have time like this and you're at home, pick up your Bible. And, and begin, begin to, to read it. it. If, if you, you say, say, well, where, where do I start? start? 
Start in Genesis, Genesis chapter 1. one. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> start in the beginning. The beginning. Yeah. And you'll see God will speak to you if you read his words because they're his thoughts. thoughts. Yes. But, but I, I want to read you from Hebrews chapter 13. And, and I will give you two little, little thoughts here, here from, from this one chapter. chapter. The first, and I'm reading from the classic Amplified, Amplified. the first thought is from verse, second part of verse 5 and 6 of Hebrews 13. For he, God himself has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not I will, I will not, not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake, forsake you, nor let you down, nor relax my hold on you, assuredly not. Wow. So, take comfort, and be encouraged, and confidently and boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be seized with alarm. I will not fear. I will not dread. I will not be terrified. Amen. Come on. Trust, Trust in the Lord. Lord. Yeah. He, he says, says, I won't, I won't fail you. I will not let you down. down. I will not relax my hold on you. Right? right? This, this is, is the first thought. thought. And, and the last thought is from verse 20. And verse 21 of Hebrews 13. 13. And remember, this is the classic Amplified. Now may the God of peace, who is the author and the giver of peace, who brought again from among the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the, By the blood, blood that sealed and ratified the everlasting covenant and agreement, strengthen, complete, perfect, and make you what you ought to be, and equip you with everything good that you may carry out his will, while he himself works in you and accomplishes that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ the Messiah, to whom be glory forever and ever throughout all the ages. Amen. 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 Dear Pastor Robert, would you pray for um, those watching uh, along those lines as the Holy Spirit leads you? Uh, that would be wonderful. Thank you so much. Yes. yes. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, I thank you that through, through the covenant that you have established with each and every one of us through the blood of Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord. you're able thank you, Lord. to strengthen us, mm. yeah. to, to complete us, to perfect, perfect us, Amen. to make us what we, we ought to be, yeah. to, to remove, remove out of our, our conscience the struggle of our failures, oh, yes. the struggle of our past mistakes, the struggles of guilt, condemnation, shame, shame, anger, and, and every work, work of darkness. darkness. I, I thank, thank you, Lord, <coughs> that thank you are able to remove all of these struggles out of us and give us this peace that you are making us what we ought to be yeah. and yes. equip us with everything good that we all may carry out your perfect will, yeah. that we may see that what you have planned for us coming to pass in our lives. And the Holy Spirit would say to each and one of you, lift up your heads, spread your wings of faith, rise up to new heights of God's grace and goodness and mercy, because his love is all over you, to carry you to new heights of his love and grace, to lift you up, for, for the, the glory and the praise of his grace. Mm -hmm. Oh, God says, I will rejoice over you with a happy song. Yeah. I will rejoice over you with salvation. I will lift you up out of the mire and, and all the despair, and you will rejoice in my goodness, says the Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name, I bless you all. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor Robert. You know, as you were talking, I just, you know, it's such a testimony of God's faithfulness everything that you have shared you know and we know that he who began a good work in us is faithful to complete it and, and that's what I can just see God is faithful he's faithful to everyone who's listening he's going to get us through he's at work in us constantly and you know such yeah. a great um, example of your life of God's faithfulness amen yeah, yeah amen. amen I, I can, can tell, tell you I've been a preacher, preacher for a little over 40 years, years. 
and God, God has, has not failed. failed. Amen. And it's and not because I'm better, better than, than anybody else. else. It's, it's grace upon grace upon grace. grace. And we received that grace simply through Jesus Christ. Christ. Isn't that amazing? Amazing. Yeah. amazing, amazing. Thank you so much for your encouraging words of life, you know, to us all. And, uh, you know, you've told us even to, to stand on those sure and certain promises. Yeah. You know, there are some solid things, even in the uncertainty that we're in right now. There are some things that are so certain. That's God's love for us. Yeah. God's Amen. promise of his presence mm -hmm. and his provision mm -hmm. and uh, that he's working all these things for our good. Yeah. And uh, what can we pray for um, Life Church and for Pastor Robert and his family uh, before you leave us? We'd love to pray for you as well. Yeah, yeah, well, well thank, thank you, thank you. Thank you. What well, can, can you pray, pray for us? us? You, you know, know, I just keep feeling it's, it's a new day for us to come into a new place of His grace and, and favor. And I so long for this, not, not for myself to say, mm. oh, I'm more this or that. No, for precious people. Yeah. Amen. That we may see more people mm. receive this love and healing. I just keep believing that this is a day when we will see the healing anointing throughout this nation and throughout the nations, throughout throughout the nations yeah. of the world. The, you, you know, know what, what you saw with mm. Peter and John, mm. what yeah. you saw with Paul yeah. and with yeah. the other mm. apostles, mm. Because, because it wasn't, wasn't their godliness or virtue that made it happen. It, it was the Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. And yeah. he is the same, same yesterday, yesterday, today, and forever. forever. So, oh, if you pray anything, pray that for us. Yeah, absolutely. Now, everyone, join with me as we pray for um, Pastor Robert and Life Church. Heavenly Father, we thank yes. you for Pastor Robert. Mm. Thank you for the example of his life and ministry mm. of your faithfulness yeah. to him. Thank you for his words of life. Thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing. And yes. Lord, I thank you for his heart mm. to be even more of an influence for you in this day, to, to be a minister of your truth, a minister of your love, of your healing, of your restoration and your redemption. Thank you, Father. And Lord, we ask that you would give him his heart's desire. Yeah. You would give him and bless him and life church over, yes. above and beyond yes. all they would even ask things or imagine in this day i thank you father that you have raised pastor robert up mm. for such a time as this yes, and i amen. thank you that all of the foundations that you've laid in his life the connections and the divine connections around the world are all going to come into full use and fruition for the glory of god mm. for the kingdom of yeah. god in jesus name and everybody said amen amen, amen. amen. <laughs> love well, to I love I'm looking forward, like the Queen said, we will be together again. Amen. Yes, we will. It will come sooner than later. So let's see this time that we're on the lockdown work for God's glory and good. Amen. Bless you, Pastor Robert. Love to Virginia and the family. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Wow. Oh, wasn't that amazing to have uh, Pastor Robert with us? He's such a beautiful man of God. He is one of the most humble men, you know, that Ian and I have had the privilege of knowing. He's got the most incredible character, um, has been an incredible mentor to us over the years. And you can probably just sense his passion and his love. And uh, we've learned so much from him. And he's been such a blessing to us tonight, um, hasn't mm, he? Yeah, yeah, it's good. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us this evening. And, um, you know, as we shared, this is a time of casting the net wide and uh, the broadcasting. And you can really help uh, in that by sharing the recorded post of this broadcast and also by doing the watch parties and things. As I keep saying, let's all join together in getting the message out. And Paul has asked us to pray for Fiola and Scott. Yes, we will pray for them now. Let's pray for Fiola and Scott now. Would you lead us, darling? Yes. Thank Heavenly you. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father God, for Fiola and Scott. Lord, if they're listening, if they're not. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would come and bring that comfort to them in their yes, hearts right now. Lord, you are the comforter. You are the peace giver. Thank Lord, you, and Father. I ask right now that you'd send your ministering angels just to uh, comfort them at this difficult time, Lord. And, you know, we've all had pets and we've had these things in our life and it can be very um, sad and it can feel like a real absence. But, you know, God cares Lord. about every area of our life. 
he Thank really you, does Tom. and he looks down and he's he has a concern and he, he wants to comfort and, and so lord i thank you father god that you mm. would just minister to them yes in lord. jesus name father god amen yes lord and we commit their marriage plans to you yeah. father and we pray even in this uh, lockdown time father you are able to redeem the time you are able to make yeah. a way where there seems no way and father we pray you'd fill them and flood their hearts yeah. and minds with that blessed assurance that uh, you have it covered yeah. you are going to work all things out for their good in jesus name we pray and everyone said amen amen, amen. Bless you. Thank you, Simba. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Paula. Thank you to all who've been with us this evening. Hasn't it been a wonderful time together? God bless you and uh, talk we'll very see soon. on Sunday. We've got Rebecca King who'll be joining us uh, for our Sunday service and I'm sure she'll have a lot of things to share at this time. So we're excited about that. But have a great week. Continue to just rest in him and um, know that he is faithful. He loves you. He is with you. He is for you. We're in this together and the great harvest is coming and revival's coming and God is moving and we'll continue to move in your life. He has not stopped. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Good evening. Bye-bye. Love you.